This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting once again, Brian, once again. Yes. From our personal pandemic bunkers here. We're hunkered down. We are social distancing. We're being good citizens right now, like we have to be. Uh, this week, though, we do have a guest joining us. Thank you so much. We've got uh, Charles McClendon with the Cannon Brew Pub. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. I am sort of with you in spirit, but very distant, yes. So, yeah. yes, we have Charles McClendon, the brewmaster for Cannon Brew Pub, or the Cannon Brew Pub. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about beer recipe creation and the process of doing that, the state of the industry, and maybe we'll get into some uh, wild card questions or two because he did ask us to uh, wild card him. So, Charles, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Glad I was able to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to have fun, too, because we found out just before we got on the air here, Brian, uh, Charles had this is second career, second career. And it was a pretty <laughs> big uh, direction change there. So we'll dive into that a little bit more later. Absolutely. So, Brian, uh, how's your week gone, man? Have you been staying at home like you're supposed to? Yeah, you know, for the most part, I I made it's so easy for me to just kind of hole up at home, but I do kind of get a little stir crazy. I did have to make a quick run out to take care of an errand or two. And I did make one stop at a package store and picked up a few beers, you know, because I need some more beer. I've been hitting the cellar pretty hard. I, I got the, uh, a funky Buddha maple bacon coffee porter as just last year. So that's not too celery, but I got the uh, uh, line Creek barrel aged triple vanilla coffee stout which was actually really tasty and held up well i think it was two or three years old or something like that we were down there when they released that so that was fun and uh it's kind of went with a stout and coffee thing i just noticed that lupulin brewing's polar natins paradise from 2019 which was uh yeah good coffee stout beer how about you what'd you do i've been home brian i've been home i think i mentioned on last week's show i actually I have been tested for coronavirus under my doctor's advice. I had to go get the test. And in keeping with the tradition, if you hear out there people waiting forever for results, I still do not have results of my test. So I don't Your corona was so strong it broke the test. It did, man. It did. So on a positive note, though, I think if I did have it, I think I've broken and it's passed on. And, you know, we see in the news about the people, these really bad cases, but the documentation they gave me and some other information I looked up, most of the people that get it are going to be pretty mild. You know, the symptoms are going to be fairly mild, probably a little bit of a, you know, maybe a little bit of labored breathing and a a fever, you know, something like that. Uh, The ones we're hearing about, though, is it, I mean, there is a decent percentage of people that get hit really, really hard with it. And some people are actually going to be asymptomatic altogether you know you're just they're just they're going to be carriers and never have anything i did read eight days from your symptoms is how long you're supposedly contagious potentially so you may be in the clear by the time you know you'll probably be completely in the clear i think i'm two weeks from my first symptoms right okay so so, and my fever is totally broke totally gone so so i'm good there but i haven't been out of the house in like eight or nine days or i don't i'm not even sure you know what's going on out there i've realized how useless my dog is (laughs) <laughs> These four people, like she's never once bought beer or cooked or picked up anything. She's been laying around, you know, just a terrible, <laughs> terrible. There, so. Charles, how has uh, quarantining been going for you? As of right now, like I'm, I'm staying home, but uh, I'm still having to go in to work. Obviously, I mean, we're a brew pub. We're still doing curbside and to go service, and okay, right. Uh, I'm still having to bottle beer periodically and. You know, we're we're still we're still rocking and rolling and I've got beer in the tanks, so I've gotta get moved and stuff like that. So I'm still having to go in and do things periodically. But you know, today was my day off. That was a welcome. Okay. But the 
I'll get up and go in tomorrow and probably the rest of the week and just keep going at it until I'm told to stop. Are you finding that you are drinking more or less or the same before all this happened? You know, I'd still like, normally it would be like two beers sitting at the bar at the end of the day and, and talking to people or, or, you know, sitting and reading a book at the bar. Yeah. I'm that guy. I'll sit at a bar and read a book and drink beer. Nerd. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it may not have anything to do with brewing either. It may just be me sitting, at a, sitting there reading a book. And it, it's, it's anything from the philosophies of Andy Warhol to how to have a successful, a realist guide to a successful music career. I think it was the last book I finished. Okay. Uh, Are you an aspiring musician then? Or oh, just absolutely read? not. No, I'm just. Okay. I'm just, all right. Just I'm take, like, take in all just, the knowledge you can. Huh? Yeah. I just read everything. <laughs> you know. So no, nah, I'm probably still drinking about two, three beers a night. And okay. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. And somebody gave me you a know. bottle of whiskey. So I've broken that out a time or two in uh, place of the beers for the good cigars. So. Uh, Very nice. Oh, I knew Brian, Brian's all about that. Sure enough. I think I may be drinking less than I normally do. <gasps> well, oh you know, Brian, when we didn't have a fever, so, and you were <laughs> sick, well, I, I was guess, a little so. under the weather, but you know, when we're active and when, when we can get out and do stuff, we do a lot. Oh and yeah. So there's a lot there that goes on with drinking. And I kind of got in the habit that if I wasn't doing events and stuff, uh, if I wasn't taping the show or doing an event or doing a brewery visit, I try not to drink at home because we do a decent amount out. So mm-hmm. I've kind of stuck to that policy other than a couple of times of getting online with friends and some Zoom chats and that. But I've been trying to behave. So, you know, I've seen a lot of other people that are like, man, it's holiday every day. I'm digging <laughs> deep into the cellar and all that. But I'm drinking just a little bit less, actually. It's crazy wow. stuff, man. Before your, your beer arm atrophies anymore, we ought to get into the beers of the week. That's it. You got it, man. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Well, Brian, as always, we've got a we got a good list. And Brian, I love the theme that you you're going with. We had a discussion earlier uh, before <laughs> we got on the show. What beers fit with a global pandemic apocalypse, social distancing. So for your list, you you got Cherry Street Shutdown Stout there since we're on the shutdown you've got sierra nevada's rain check and uh, orpheus transmigration of souls does that fit the theme you think the transmigration or you just so you're gonna throw it Uh, well i had it i wanted an ipa and also that has to do with people's souls going when they pass going into new bodies and coming back to earth so i'm like yeah you know it's a little dark it's a little more macabre than i was going for but it fits in and it gets me an ipa in the list so i'm going with it you know, one that I wanted to, ha- I didn't have the beer, but I thought would be a good one because it kind of feels like we're at La Fin du Monde. La Fin du Monde, uh, yeah. Thinking that would be a good one to have. But for my part, Brian, I have a Highland vacation. Uh, Highland, thank you so much. They sent a nice little letter and a six pack of this saying, thanks for keeping us informed. And, you know, here's something to enjoy while we're staying at home. So I've been sipping through those, really enjoying them. And I also have, Brian, I think this is maybe one that you brought me from Borderlands Brewing called Noche Dulce, which is a Moonlight Vanilla Porter. Oh, yeah. I figured yeah. I haven't got into anything uh, dark in a little while, you know, a little Porter Stouty in that. So I think I'm going to get into that. Should be a good time. Brian, what's happening this week in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. All right, so the the top thing we got is Other Half Brewing has created an open-ended worldwide beer collaboration to support the beer and hospitality industry. So how it works is the recipe is open source and it's available online, and the name and the associated artwork are also available for any brewer to use. Blue Label Packaging Company will even print the labels at cost for participating breweries. They only ask that a portion of the proceeds go to supporting the hospitality professionals in your community. They don't stipulate how much, and the rest goes to the brewery to help keep you in business. Breweries can download the recipe and label designs at altogether.beer. So A-L-L, together.beer. And register to be added to the list of breweries participating. That's good stuff, Brian. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all, it's nice to see that. And Brian, we've got some other news, but we don't have it, any yeah. more time. You know, we've run out of time here. So you are listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. 
We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back very soon to talk to Charles McClendon from the Cannon Brew Pub. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're Storytime Construction, and we build breweries. We're Georgia's most experienced and hands-on contractors when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding existing breweries. We offer full build-outs, remodeling, and additions, as well as consulting and construction management. Give us a call at 770-733-4343. Storytime Construction. We build breweries. As a brewery owner or tap room manager, are you looking for ways to enhance your customer experience while maximizing your revenues? Craft Cellar is a mobile solution that helps your brewery drive sales and attract new customers through online pre-sales for beer releases, events, and memberships. Get details now at craftseller.com. Mention Beer Guys Radio after sign up and extend your free trial to a full 30 days. Remember craftseller.com, C-R-A-F-T-C-E-L-L-R.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Oh, God, here we go again. Dork alert. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Remember, all episodes are available on demand, so if you miss the broadcast, get the podcast. Beer Guys Radio is available on all popular podcasting apps. Now let's get back to our talk with the Cannon Brew Pub. Charles, I'm going to get to you in just a second, but I forgot to say something in the first segment that I want to throw out here real quick. I forgot to tell folks about a new project that we've started in partnership with Whip Fleece CPAs and consultants. Uh, we're going to be doing a podcast called the Hops and Ledgers podcast, and that's going to be quarterly episodes, and it's focusing on the business side of the brewing industry. Uh, we didn't plan on launching this for a little while. We have several topics we've been working on. But with the current COVID-19 scare and what that's done to breweries, uh, we got together, we developed some information, and uh, we wanted to get that out. So this first episode is Protecting Your Brewery Through the Coronavirus Crisis. That is out now, and it's right there in the Beer Guys radio feed, so you can get it. Hops and Ledger's podcast. We've got a lot of information there on the financial resources available to brewery and hospitality owners out there. There's a lot of stuff that is available to help out your brewery. So give that a listen. It'll kind of guide you through there. An essential resource. It is an essential resource. Absolutely. Very knowledgeable guys shared this information. I just followed along, Brian. So that's okay. the way it goes. <laughs> so Charles, I guess amid all of this, man, things are crazy. Uh, everybody's trying to make the best of it. So how are things operating at the Canon right now? So we've gone to curbside and to go, um, and and we're we're doing what we can to serve our community. We're selling beer and bottles, and and we're selling food out the door. We've gone to, to a abbreviated menu. People are calling in. People are ordering online. They're using waiter, Uber Eats, and everything else to get food from us. So I mean. Obviously, we've seen a decline like everyone else, but we're still trying to rock and roll. We're still trying to be there and be present uh, during this time. I guess that's really all you can do, right? Just try and do the best you can, you know, be there. And uh, I think people, are you seeing in the community there that people are trying to step up and support you as much mm -hmm. as they can, getting their to-go beer and, you know, the, the food from you and such? It's really funny, you know, people are coming and they're and they're getting beer but they're ordering from us like on our patio and then we're running the order inside and it's being right. Right. But okay. they're yeah. grabbing like uh, a couple of beers and standing around outside and having two or three beers while they wait on their food that's nice to see but for the most part like i mean people are still coming to get beer periodically um we made you know, we kind of made the change that we weren't going to do any growlers unless you bought one from us, then we could actually sanitize it and do it. We didn't want to take anything from the outside. Uh, so if you want a growler, you still come get it. It's just, we're going to sell you a growler. Uh, right. We're not going to, yeah, yeah, we're not taking sure. any outside. Yeah. Normally we, it's no problem. We flip it upside down in the dishwasher, 
you know, it gets sanitized. We hit it with some sanitizer. We fill it like everything's kosher at that point. But right now during this time, I just kind of made a decision that weren't willing to do that. It's kind of dangerous. You kind of have to. I'm curious what your brewing schedule is like. I think you gave us like a bit of a hint. Like when was the last time you brewed? I'm assuming it's not a daily thing right now because of definitely the nature not. of things. Yeah, yeah, definitely not right now. I mean, I've, I've got some beer sitting in the tank. Uh, sitting in a couple of tanks and those are going to have to get moved this week if not this week then they'll get moved early next week and they just they've been resting for a little while it's getting to the point it's like all right i've got to i've got to move these and 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 get these where they're supposed to be whether it be in a keg or or you know in the serving tank wherever um and then i've got to get those tanks or whatever cip and cleaned but are you uh, doing any experimentation right now or just kind of keeping the staples flowing? It's keeping the staples. Um, any experimentation, uh, I'm sort of like researching some of our own recipes and, and tweaking them back and forth and um, seeing what's, what's there, um, revamping the brewing schedule uh, totally for when things uh, come back on. Um, a lot of what we were getting ready to do is 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 not being done um, any longer. I had seen that you were doing casks before, and I'm curious mm -hmm. if maybe that's, you know, you can take existing beer that you have and say, hey, you know, to try to intrigue people to come in, like, hey, we, we've treated this a little differently. We've got a special cask on this. Are you still doing any of that, or is that just too much of a nuisance with everything else going yeah, on? Yeah, it's, it's kind of too much of a nuisance right now for us with yeah. everything else going on. I don't have anything sitting and tanks that I can move into those right now. And um, it, it's kind of one of those things that um, really concentrating on just keeping the core beers up and running and flowing. And what I have as far as a seasonal aspect goes, we're putting those in bottles as we need them and sending them out as, as we can. So, you know, Charles, I'm going to switch directions here a little bit because I teased this in the first segment that, uh, <laughs> Brewing is actually a second career for you, right? Mm -hmm. But you're only like, what, 25, 26, mm -hmm. it, it looks like there. So <laughs> his just for men is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm about 12 years older than that. Okay. All um, right. But So what did you do before you got into brewing? Um, before I was brewing, I spent 14 years um, as a student pastor for uh, the Methodist churches uh, in the middle and South Georgia area and uh, working with middle school, high school and, and college students. Um, I think I was in about four or five different churches over the four, four different churches over the course of that time. Man, that is a, that's quite a career change. You yes. Know, we hear people getting, you know, we see a lot of guys that were engineers that mm -hmm. become brewers and attorneys is another mm -hmm. one we've seen. And Brian, I think interestingly enough, dentists, dentists, yes. that we found. So, and I think maybe there's, you know, a combination of things there where it is um, uh, one, just kind of the mindset, you know, of the, of the uh, engineer type brewing plays in well to that. Right. And then if you've been a dentist or an attorney, the financial need, the finances are there probably to start, to start a brewery. Sure. Right. Well, it's a little easier there, but clergy there, there, the finances for clergy, isn't really there for, uh, for brewing, for starting a brewery, right? <laughs> no. Uh, so I basically tell people that it's really, I jokingly tell people there's not a huge difference. Uh, and the joking part of that is if you look at an eighth grader and you say, why did you do that? He goes, I don't know. And you go, I don't know either. I, that's why I asked you. And if the yeast does something, you can usually figure out why they did it. Sure. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's probably the biggest difference. Otherwise, it's, you know, uh, you still get to have those same sort of conversations. Uh, but the guy sitting across the bar from you uh, with a beer isn't isn't trying to you know, fool you. He's not trying to fool you about who who they are. They're they're just they're just being them. Sure. They're completely genuine. Um, they're not trying to hide anything from you. They don't have a reason to. And um, I look at it as, too, as, as a student pastor, you're always trying to create an environment, one, that everybody feels accepted, um, and two, where uh, people can be themselves, and, and then three, where there's 
uh, an idea of community and there's an experience associated with that community and with those people. And I think just brewing and a brew pub and a tap room, that's exactly what we do now in all of it. Do you, do you ever preach to your beer or counsel it if necessary? If it's like now, Oh, bless it. I realized this, Lord, if you can just unstick this fermentation. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, I think, I think uh, my, first, my first brew on this system, like on my own, I was very much that way. I was very like, just don't let anything horrible happen. Help me remember right. everything I've learned. Let me through this, man. And just do it right and perfect. Lay yeah. hands upon the tank. You know? <laughs> yeah. you know what? When you're brewing, man, call in every power that you can. You know, just just make it. If you've got if you've got the power there, you know, bring it in. There's right. there's no no dirty tricks when you're doing that. Absolutely. Make these lame yeast rise up and ferment. Rise up, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're gonna take a break on that note. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We'll be back in just a moment to talk more with Charles from the Cannon Brew Pub. As beer lovers, we know real beer. And Athletic Brewing makes non-alcoholic beer that stands shoulder to shoulder with full-strength craft beer. With a fraction of the calories and certified organic, it's a great beer to enjoy anytime. Check out Athletic's selection of IPAs, Golden Ales, Stouts, and more at athleticbrewing.com. Use code BEERGUYS25 for 25% off your first order, and U.S. customers get free nationwide shipping. Athletic Brewing, brew without compromise. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I believe you have my stapler. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, KENN 1390 AM in Farmington, New Mexico. Catch Beer Guys Radio on KENN every Saturday at 5 p.m. local time. Now let's get back to Charles McClendon with the Cannon Brew Pub, the man who went from spreading the good news to pouring the good brews. Wow, did you just did you just fire that off right there, Brian? I did. Kudos to you. Yes. Yeah. Kudos to you. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's a golf clap. Yeah, that's it, right. Yeah, a little golf, golf clap thank you. for thank you. there. Thank you. I'm bowing right now. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Charles, we talked about, you know, things are a little a little crazy right now, but uh, when things are normal, how is the uh, brew scene coming up there in Columbus, Georgia? We had a, uh, a small brewery open here. They seem to be doing well. They're doing everything in-house as a tap room, but they're, they're running good business. And, you know, he and I talk pretty regularly about things and you know, if I get ready to do a recipe, like I'll pick up the phone and or I'll go over there and I'll make sure, hey, I'm getting ready to do this. Is this y'all's on is this on y'all's docket? Like we're we're very clear with each other about whether or not I'm gonna brew something that he's already done or he's gonna brew something that I've already done. And I mean we don't wanna step on one another's toes when it comes to that. Like we don't want it to appear as if we're than taking one another's recipes in any way, shape, or form. We're, you know, we're we're trying to be complete transparency and, and just complete honesty. Neighborly, between, right? Yeah, like you yeah. know, and 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 I know that if I need a bag of grain or something like that, I can call him and see if he's got it, and he'll I can go over and get it. And same thing, you know, if you know his brewmaster calls me, I can, and I've got it. I, I'm more than happy to lend it over to him. So it's it's not a big deal. Uh, in any way, shape, or form, of us. We're we're just and so as far as that goes, and, and you've had a couple of craft beer bars open here in town that have really kind of mm-hmm. pushed the scene. Um, 
and of course Fort Benning being here and, and people coming from all over the world and and all over the U.S. Um, and to to drink you know and want to drink beer and they're looking for stuff that is comparable what they have at home. Uh, so even though these are local stores, they're kind of catering to the world and to the U.S. as a whole, uh, and that's it. So it's kind of like between all of us, we, we kind of feel like maybe we're just dragging everybody along with us. Is, is Bring them on. Huh? Yeah, you know, we, you know, we're brewing more and more sours at, at Cannon Brew Pub, and, and we're trying to be weird but stay within the confines of what we think people would actually drink and people will actually buy. Speaking of that, Charles, is Columbus, would you say the tastes there are still – for lack of a better term, maybe a little more reserved or or traditional. I mean, maybe maybe in the you know maybe in the pub, uh, but as a whole, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm I'm in a microcosm. You know, I'm I'm not necessarily mm-hmm. brewing for for the masses, so to speak. I'm I'm brewing for the pub. Uh, so when I write uh, recipes, when I develop recipes, when I think like I'm I'm thinking in. And those terms, not necessarily like something that's going to blow up and go all over the place. Um, there, there are times where I do that. Of course, there are times where I do that. And then I say, well, let's see what it does here. This is sort of out of our realm. And let's push the envelope of our, our regulars and our customers. And, and so obviously right. we're trying to cater. Don't push it too hard, right? We're, we're pushing the envelope yeah. a little bit with, with the normalities, which is – not at all. I think a bad thing, and I think as as a brewer is what you ought to be doing, anyway. So yeah, well, that's you know Brian and I took in 2018. Brian and I visited every brewery and brew pub in the state of Georgia, mm-hmm. and uh, we did our trip, you know, through Columbus, mm-hmm. and we and I'm I'm assuming the other little brewery you're talking about there's Chattabruchi, mm-hmm. Mike Dennehy, and that mm-hmm. crew, right? So we've known Mike for I think since he opened his first one there, and um, yeah, was a West Point where he had yes. his first location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, so we came down there and, you know, we found Columbus to be, uh, you know what, there wasn't a ton there, but what was there was nice. You know, yeah. we, we saw, we went to Cerrone's for pizza and, yeah. you know, they're all Georgia craft beer there. Yep. We went to Nonic, uh, Multitude, you know, the nice bottle shop there. Yep. And each of those individually, they were, the quality of those were just as, you know, just as good as any, any big city, you know, and I don't mean that as a slide on Columbus, but it was, it was no. quality stuff. The nice thing about uh, a multitude is it wasn't as picked over as some of the in-town uh, bottle shops were. So some of the yeah. things I wanted to get were, were still available on the shelf. Those things would have been long gone in Atlanta. So, right. uh, you know, smaller population, but still all of the good stuff that you want. You know, that kind of leads us into uh, you were talking about, you know, developing recipes. I, I We wanted to hear more about what is your process for making these recipes? What what are you doing? <laughs> um, so I pull I pull inspiration from pretty much everywhere. I pull it from, you know, a, a painting on a wall can give me an idea, you know, and I think, you know, like just like a painter or a sculptor, like you have to be open to the idea. Uh, and then see if you can kind of figure out how to make it work on your system and in your brewery or wherever you are. But I can remember sitting down and watching things like uh, No Reservations or, or one of those Anthony Bourdain shows with a notebook in my lap um, because of just some of the the drinks and, and some of the food that he has and the flavor combinations. I mean, my grandmother has a cookbook and, and we, did a, we did a Christmas stout, a barrel-aged Christmas stout last year. And um, it, it was based on my grandmother's eggnog recipe. So it was a milk stout with just a touch of vanilla and like all the spices. And, you know, we, we even rimmed the glass with uh, uh, cinnamon sugar. Yeah. And then like threw a little nutmeg on top and that thing was phenomenal. And we've actually bottled it and we're just going to let it sell her for a year and see what, see what happens. See what happens. See what yeah. comes to be. Yeah. Yeah. So how much does feedback on individual beers influence your, you know, recipes going forward? You're like, hey, they like this. So I got to do more of this. Or is it just purely whatever hits me? <laughs> so I, I've done, we've done probably four beers where I've looked at it and go, oh, I got to do this again. This is selling way too quick. <laughs> One of those started off as a joke uh, between me and our general manager. 
And um, I said I was going to do it. And he turned and looked at me and went, you're totally doing that. And I went, I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> See, now <laughs> you got to tell us what that is. is. Now yeah. we'll so, done. so we did a beer called uh, Purple Drink. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, All so right. It was a uh, 7% brute sour, uh, kettle sour. And uh, we basically threw a bunch of grape flavored mix at it, like drink mix at it. Um, Beautiful. And Beautiful. You would think, like, and, and, like we did it and we did it post fermentation and figured out how to get it mixed in and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, what was aggravating is we put it on tap the same time we put our 20th anniversary, which was a barrel with uh, barrel aged brute sour with muscadines and black currants in it. And, um, you know, that beer took us, gosh, probably six, seven months to make. I and know where this is going. <laughs> purple drink just outsold See, it like nobody's right. business. I mean, I remember watching two guys basically over the course of four days, three days really, um, come in and just drink as much as they could and take growlers out with them. I think, and it, I did the calculations because I'd seen them so much. It, it turned out to be just in over five gallons that they were. See. And and I was it's like, tough. When you do something that popular, you have to think, you know what? I'm glad this was popular, but as a, as a respected artisan of beer, right. you know, yeah, so. like you've got this, it took me eight months to make and yeah. you're drinking this like, yeah. Most yeah. successful oh, brute it. beer ever. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's like the, the finger painting versus the Picasso. <laughs> Everybody loves a little purple, man. Get a little purple in your cup. It's good stuff. And then, and you know what? Even if someone wouldn't normally drink that, it's just the fun of having some purple drink. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that's people would order it just for the name and then drink it and absolutely. like absolutely love it. Well, you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're going to take a break, but we'll be back soon to talk about other colors of beer. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Is your brewery or restaurant pouring all jacked up? Your foundation needs to be protected from heat, chemicals, and other contaminants. At the same time, you want to make sure it's slip resistant and you can clean up your messes with soap and water. You know who to call? ResTech. We've been manufacturing poured-in-place flooring since 2002, and we've got solutions to fit any facility's needs. Go on and visit our website at ResTech.net. That's R-E-S-T-E-K.net. Drop us a line and we will come to you for a free evaluation. Oh, yeah. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram roger roger what's our back there victor now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to beer guys radio show if you enjoy the show please consider supporting us on patreon just go to patreon.com slash beer guys patrons get cool perks like beer guys swag commercial free episodes and even bonus episodes that aren't available anywhere else now let's get back to talking to charles mcclendon with the cannon brew pub charles you know things are just too serious in the world right now we're having to think things you know i i commented earlier uh earlier when it was uh april fool's day i didn't see many pranks i didn't see many pranks nah. i don't i don't think people are just they're not feeling that right now so you know we just kind of went on through but you know what i think we're gonna have a little fun here because we we right. we are just too serious the world is too serious so i'm curious what is if you're drinking beer that is not your beer, what are you drinking? Oh, gosh. Uh, so, like, macro or, like, uh, Do you craft. go for the – are you okay with a macro, man? Do you Will you grab a macro yeah, from I'll time to time? Yeah, I'll grab a macro, right. yeah. If I can find it at a quarter's banquet. 
Coors Banquet. Coors That's Banquet. a popular one. We hear for those that do drink the macros, Coors Banquet is one that that I think. Brian, how about you, man? If you're, let's say every macro beer is available, but only macros, what are you drinking? From the land of sky blue water, hams, the beer refreshing. Hams. I would have to agree with yes. that. I think if we're going yeah. macros, and... that that's got to be my thing. Yep, they're hard yeah. to find, but I put yeah. those up there. They're with a available banquet. here. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah, I see. You know, and I've stated this before, Brian. If and I don't really know if these guys are macro or or if they're considered craft still, but a Jenny Cream. Give me a Genesee <laughs> Cream Ale, man. I'm all about it. And that's Charles. I saw a little side. Are you familiar with the Jenny Cream? Well, which. We... And you said it, I was like, man, it's been a minute since I had one of those. I don't even remember See? what that tastes yeah, like. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's your lawnmower beer. It's something you serve it at, you know, the places you go when they've got a little display up that says our beer is 31 degrees, like they brag about it being ice cold. That's one of those beers you drink at that temperature. You know, you're not worried about 45 degrees and cellar temps and all of this. Right. Get it ice cold and enjoy it, you know. Right, just go right, right, it. right. So, so that's that's mine. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go for if I'm drinking cheap beers, uh, macro hams is definitely my favorite. If we if you know if we're talking macros, and uh, it, I don't know if it's a macro or a craft, but I know it's considered a cheap beer. It's your your uncle's beer, your grandpa's beer. The Jenny they had the Jenny some cream. Ellie yeah. like collaboration, didn't they? Genesee cream. What was that? You you made they a, did one with other half. Other half. Yeah. You went out of your way to. I go think it was grab called Jenny Dream, wasn't it? <laughs> it's like yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, other half in Genesee did Jenny Dream, and I actually put in I put in some work to get cans of that, yeah, and I yes, think I did. ended up on a Rochester Beer Traders group, and they said we're we only do local in person trays, and I was like, guys, look, I know your group says local in person only, but here's my story, because uh, Charles, I lived in in upstate New York right. years and years ago. Jenny Cream was the first beer like my my buddy snuck it from his dad's fridge <laughs> and we split a can and we were the coolest 15 year olds out there you know at right. the time <laughs> so it's got a special place in my heart so i had to get that and that was really good yeah i think it's you know that's got a cult following kind of like yingling in pennsylvania before mm -hmm. it it got out everywhere you know it was just everybody in in new york knows you know jenny cream Indeed. Oh, yeah. We were talking between uh, in the break about uh, something else that I'm very intrigued by, Boilermakers. What is your favorite Boilermaker? Talking about a shot and a beer? Yeah, a shot and a beer. Yeah, anything yeah. anything that mixes the, the harder stuff with the beer. So I'm a huge fan of just like a straight Jameson shot and, uh, and chasing it with a course banquet. Like for whatever reason, like that is the... That is one of the best things to me, and uh, I've I've gotten close to a course banquet before. If I can't find it, I'll jump to something else along that same lines. But um, generally, shot of Jameson and then uh, sipping on a course banquet afterwards. A little banquet. Do you think. shoot the shot, or oh, yeah, how does yeah. that? Yeah, you just you, shoot the yeah. shot and then you sip on the beer. Okay, yeah. some I people have drop to. it in. I like okay. it, you gotcha. can yeah, right, drop right. it in. Some people can sip on them, go back and forth. I've actually done that back and forth when I'm trying to check out a pairing, basically. What was the uh, the herbal thing that's not chartreuse that we mix with a white beer that was a really intriguing combination? Uh, I can't think Fern of what it is. Fernet Branca. Fernet Branca, yeah, yeah, yeah. With a white, white ale was uh, one of the very interesting uh, pairings. So Brian's, are sake, are sake bombs techni technically boilermakers? <laughs> would they fall in it because we did those recently we discovered the yes, sake bomb recently. actually yeah i think so what do we do i like a mango sake and tropicalia yeah. or something like that something along those no, lines I did yeah something. it was really good they were messy but it was fun it was fun to get oh, a little yeah. goofy there absolutely do you do much uh beer and food pairing charles I mean, do you get involved with that at the pub, or are you just you just taking care of the beer side? I'm just I'm taking care of the beer. I always tell people, you know, I mean, drink what you like. Like, I mean, sure. if if you want a middle high life, then drink a high life. If you want an IPA with your steak, drink an IPA with your steak. If you want a stout with your fish tacos, then drink a stout with your fish tacos. I, I mean, that's crazy. I, I, I won't mean, allow people, that. No. Like people <laughs> people get way too caught up in it, um, and to an extent now. There, I mean. Drink what you like and eat what you like, and if I, I can mean, agree if, with that, I mean, yeah, if sure. that's what you want, like nobody's changing your mind. But I mean, there's a level of education that I, you know, if somebody says, if a server comes to me and says, "Hey, my people have ordered this, they want to know what beer they should drink with this," and I'll 
tell them. I was like, go back and recommend this or, or these two with this dish. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Is um, every recommendation Coors Banquet? <clears throat> no. Like, <'cause laughs> what we should don't, they drink with this? Coors Banquet. No, we don't, uh, <laughs> we don't do, um, macro beers no, on no tap and all that no stuff. Ma- okay. So that stuff. That's, I was yeah. wondering just, okay. All right. That's cool. So what do you pair beer wise with the, uh, the turning blue burger challenge? What, what beer uh, goes best with that? So I think the last time somebody <laughs> did one of those and I was around, he drank just a red jacket ale, which is a, uh, okay. no, uh, Amber. It's our Amber, Amber ale. Yeah. yeah. We saw that for those who have no idea what Brian's talking about, the, the, what's it called? Turning blue challenge, right? right? It's, it's a massive burger and is it chili cheese fries? Yes. That goes with it. So, yeah. and you've got one of those, you have to eat it in a certain amount of time. Uh, I think and it's 30 minutes you have yeah, to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. We, when we were doing our research for the show, as part of our very hard work that we put in, we watched right. a video of a guy doing the cheeseburger challenge. And I think he set a record. He did it in like seven and a half minutes. Yep. Or, like it was yeah. under seven minutes. So it was like I think you're right. I think it was six something, wasn't yeah, it? it was yeah, like not. Yeah. And then he slammed the beer afterwards. And I'm like, <laughs> I, have seen, I have seen what human potential is. Have, for those that have ever seen a dog like go after a can of fresh dog food that's the way this guy was eating the burger he's just he's leaning like over a... into it just just chomping bites off of this thing just tearing it up so i guess that uh i guess those guys that are those competitive eaters like that they've got to have their methods to get that stuff done yeah, see i wouldn't win it i could uh, i wouldn't win the time challenge because i'd just be there like a doofus trying to eat it like a regular burger going wow this is really big you know no you gotta, you know, he get had your technique. elbows in. <laughs> yeah. He did. He did have technique there. There are absolutely. burgers on our menu that I can't finish. I mean, they're just See? like they're yeah. packed so much with stuff, and like I'll eat like half of it and then half the fries and eat the rest That's of it for that, lunch man. the next That's day. Enough. <laughs> yeah. What's your most popular beer there at the Cannon? What do, what do folks go for the most? Oh, it's probably it's probably Red Jacket, no doubt. Like that's what okay. we're known for. That's what people drink and. Um, you know, I love people that. People have been drinking that beer for 20 years, man. So Was it Fractal, Brian, that we were talking to recently that they said their number one was an amber? Yeah. I mm-hmm. it, the, the red ale and the ambers. Yeah, you yeah. don't see them around at all. And they're such a throwback, but I, I used to love those. I love that. I don't see them anymore. I, I, I yeah. barely ever see them. So I love that. I love that they are still, that torch is still being carried in some places. So that's, yeah. it's a very brew pubby beer. And that's, it is. Like we were talking earlier, Charles, Columbus is, for lack of a better term, kind of a sleepy town in the big beer scene that is Georgia. You know, we've got Atlanta gets a, a lot of talk. Athens gets talk. Savannah gets mentioned. Uh, you know what? Even I think Macon probably more so than Columbus. Uh, but, you know, Columbus coming up there. But, you know, that's something that uh, the Cannon's been around since 99. Yeah. You know, these these aren't new kids on the block. This is a well-established, probably one of the first half a dozen breweries in the state uh, uh, that are still open, yeah. I believe, I, some, I somewhere we close to it maybe there. Maybe the first or second brew pub in the state. Yeah, See? like it's yeah. definitely yeah. a survivor like, I mean, you know, situation here. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I, mean, I think Max Lagers is the first, is the longest open, and they opened in 98. So, yeah. you know, yeah, it's we, 99, we opened man, 99, right up on so. there. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're that's right. Something, yeah. man. I mean, it's it's amazing to be a part of that legacy, and sure, you know, to be a part of of what's been happening over the last twenty years. Like it's it's actually a cool thing. Uh, I mean, to to be a part of something that long running, something that's been around twenty years, man. Yeah, long time I, for I mean, a brewery. Absolutely, yeah. seriously. Well, Charles, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you chatting with us about the cannon and doing uh banquet macro beers and all that it's good times <laughs> yeah man. no problem thanks for having me i appreciate absolutely. it absolutely but that is going to wrap it up for this episode of the beer guys radio show uh join us next week we're going to be talking with portland's breakside brewing for more craft beer info follow us online we are beer guys radio on facebook twitter and instagram thanks for tuning in have a great week and don't forget to drink local cheers 